Now let's look at this next example. It's from economics. So we've got a company that's producing genes, and this is their cost function. So to produce x pairs of genes, this is how much it'll cost. We need to find the marginal cost function. So here's an example where this discipline has some terminology that we're not familiar with, but it actually means derivative, it means rate of change of. So here, marginal cost really means the rate of change in cost with respect to, to quantity. So in other words, it means it's the derivative of the cost function with respect to x. So what is it in this case? Well, c prime of x is 3 plus 0.02x plus 0.0006x squared. So there's our marginal cost function. Let's find c prime of 100 and explain its meaning. So what does this mean, c prime of 100? So that's 3 plus 0 0.02 times 100 plus 0 0.0006 times 100 squared. And so that'll be 3 plus 2 plus 100 squared, so that's four zeros. That means our decimal place moves four over, so that's plus six. So that's 11. And so that is $11 per item. In this case, it's a pair of genes. So $11 per item. So what does this actually mean? C prime of 100 is 11. What does that mean? What does this marginal value mean? Well, it helps if we think in terms of a diagram. Here's our cost function. Starts at 2,000, heads up. So that's C. This is our x-axis. At 100 pairs of genes, we're here. We just took a derivative, which we can interpret as the slope of a tangent line. And we found that the slope is 11. So that means if I move over one unit, to 101, then I have to move up 11 units to get back on the tangent line. So C prime of 101, which is 11, is how much it takes to get back up onto the tangent line. Now that should roughly be, approximately, you know, tangent lines are a good approximation to the graph, should be roughly how much it takes to get back onto the curve itself. So that's C101 is the point on the curve, and this is C100 is down here, how much do I have to jump to get from C100 to C101? Well, that's the cost to produce that 101st pair of genes. And this is telling me that it takes roughly $11 to make that jump, or that jump is roughly of height 11. So this predicts, so this predicts to produce, produce, the 101st pair of genes, it costs approximately $11. Now we can compare that with the actual cost. So the actual cost to produce the 101st pair of genes is, well, it's given by the cost to produce all 101 pairs of genes minus the cost of producing the first 100 pair of genes. And so we can pop 101 into the cost function and 100 into the cost function and take their difference. And what we get is about $11 and seven cents, so rounded to the nearest cent, $11.07. So that's our actual cost. And notice that our predictive cost, what the marginal cost function was telling us, is that it should cost approximately $11 for the 101st pair of genes. So you can see that the approximation is pretty close to the actual value. All right, and that's it for this example.